Grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I once was asked a question. How do angels, who are spirit beings without bodies, who are immortal, they cannot die, how do angels do battle? How do angels fight each other if they can't hurt or kill each other? And what does that look like? I had to draw on my board game experience in order to answer that question. You see, one of my, my little side hobbies is I love playing board games. and and. If you also like board games, you'll notice that not every board game is about just destroying your opponent. Oftentimes, board games are about control. You move your pieces across the board, or you put your pieces on the board in order to gain more control. And the more control you get of the board, the more influence you have, and the more you can bend the other players to your will, doing what you want, or even limiting their choices. Spiritual warfare is about influence and control. And today, when we talk about spiritual warfare and angels doing battle. We have to understand that the battle for influence and control isn't centered on the White House. It's centered on your house. It's a battle for control right here in my heart. As a person gives themselves over to sin more and more, the the devil gains influence and control over their life and control over their decisions. And honestly, when each of us look at our lives, that's a battle we all face. Today, the Holy Spirit gives you comfort that the dragon, our enemy, the snake that the kids just stomped on here, has been overcome. The words for our meditation today are recorded in Revelation chapter 12, beginning at the seventh verse. I invite you to stand as we read these verses in Jesus' name. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? These are your words. Heavenly Father, make us holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. You may be seated.
So we just read in our verses for today how the angel Michael, along with the other angels of heaven, throw down the dragon, that ancient serpent. They overcame him. And so first, I want to ask the question, who is Michael? It's an interesting question because there's a lot of debate in Christianity about who the or about the identity of this powerful angel. On the one hand, many people look at Michael and they say, well, he's an archangel. Arch means a a commander of angels. And we certainly see him operating this way in these verses. His name in Hebrew, Michael, means who is like God. And if Michael is an archangel, then he's one of only three angels that we're given the specific names of in the Bible. There's Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer, or Satan. So that's the one view, that he's this powerful angel. The other side of the debate debate asks if Michael is... Another name for the pre-incarnate Christ, or Jesus, before he became human flesh and blood. Jesus, the Son of God, actually appears all the time in the Old Testament. He will often appear under the name the angel or the messenger of the Lord. In some cases in Scripture, like in Joshua chapter 3, He appears as the commander of the armies of the Lord. And one of the Hebrew names for him is the Lord of Sabaoth, which means the Lord of the heavenly hosts, the heavenly armies. You might think of that moment in the garden when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus. Peter takes out his sword, and Jesus tells him to put his sword away. Don't you know that I could call on my heavenly Father, and he would give me twelve legions of angels? And so there's a question. Is Jesus this same Michael who commands the legions of God's angels? Ultimately, because Scripture doesn't come out and give us the answer, in humility, we actually have to set our opinions aside, wherever we might fall, and wait until we get into heaven, where God will reveal the answer to the question and the mystery. However, all that being said, what we can say about Michael is he operates as an agent of God. And whenever God works through agents, God ultimately receives the glory and the honor and praise for the work that they do. So for instance, God sends angels into your life as agents. They're there on God's behalf, sent from heaven to protect you to guard you from physical danger, to to guard and protect you from spiritual danger, all the unseen spiritual attacks that happen around you day after day. There are angels sent by God to protect you. And God gets the glory and the honor. As I said before, Michael acts as an agent of God. He and his angels cast the devil and his angels out of heaven. They fall like lightning from heaven, Jesus says. God gets the glory, the honor, and the praise for that victory. We see throughout history, the ultimate agent who carries out the Father's will is his Son, Jesus Christ. That's why he came to this world, to carry out the Father's will. He came to suffer and die on the cross 
So that when you see the, the wooden stake of the cross pounded into the hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull, you see the Lord's own victory, the Lord crushing the skull of our greatest enemies, sin, death, and the devil. And God alone, God gets the honor and the glory and the praise for that victory. Why it's important for us to understand that God works through agents is because not only are the angels operating as God's agents on his behalf, but also you and I. The angels are sent from heaven's throne down to this world. You and I are sent from God's house, his sanctuary, out into the world to carry out God's will. And sadly, tragically, oftentimes the the operating question behind people's lives is the question, what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to do with my life? You see, that's the wrong question. Because it's not my life. It's God's life. That's why he's redeemed us. That's why he's made us his children. He, he's baptized you and made you born again so that your life belongs to, to him. But sadly, what, what we do when we listen to the devil is, is we want to follow in the devil's footsteps. The devil was created by God as an angel, and he rebelled against God. God had a task and an assignment for him, and the devil said, No, I refuse, I reject. And said the devil wanted to be the God over his own life, and wanted control over his own life. And as such, he tempts people in our world today to do the same thing, To believe that it's my life, my choice, my decision. And how often the choices we make, they're driven by those questions. Aren't choices that lead us toward God and into a relationship with God and a closer relationship with your Savior, but so often are decisions that lead us away from God away from spending our time with him, and away from Jesus as my Savior. How easy is it for me to ask that question, what pleases me to lead me down the path of doing exactly what the devil wants? You are an agent by God, chosen by God, Redeemed by God. Why? Because you have a special job, you have a special mission, and that mission is to overcome the devil. And you overcome him three ways, we're told in these verses. You overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. That is a powerful statement. The blood of the Lamb is what overthrows the devil. It was the blood of the Passover lamb in the Old Testament that drove away the angel of death. And so it is the blood of our true Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, that forgives sins, delivers you from death and the devil. And that's why God's kingdom is all about the blood of Jesus. We we sprinkle that blood in holy baptism to consecrate a child as a child of God. We drink that blood to forgive sins and, and wash away the impurities in our hearts. By faith, when you believe in Jesus, you're you're taken back to the cross, taken back to that moment when God drove the stake through the devil's head. So you too participate in that victory over the devil. You overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of the testimony. You have a testimony. You have a witness. God has done amazing things in your life. 
God has redeemed you. He has rescued you. He has forgiven you. You see his blessings poured out on you day after day. You know the, the wonderful blessing of having a relationship with your God and your Savior, Jesus. You have a testimony, and your testimony is important because that's what the Holy Spirit uses to free other people from bondage to the devil. And if the one thing the devil wants for us, if it, it, it's to not share. It's to not talk about it. It's, it's to think that what I have to share isn't important. It is. We're told right here. They overcome the devil by the word of the testimony. And finally, because they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. That's a powerful statement. Just a couple weeks ago, we had Confirmation Sunday. You heard our, our young Christians stand in front of the congregation as a promise to give up their life rather than to give up their faith in Jesus. And the beautiful thing is, and the point of all of that, is it's really not my life. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Jesus who has redeemed me with his own precious blood. My life is his. Whether I live, whether I die, whatever I do, it belongs to the Lord. You overcome the devil by recognizing my life is God's. As we think about this spiritual warfare, Again, it is a battle for control. It is a battle for influence. A fight for influence and control in, in our own hearts, in our own homes. But today, the Lord Jesus points to you, points you to how you maintain control through the blood of the Lamb, through the word of the testimony, through not loving your lives so much as to shrink from death. God uses you to spread his kingdom, to share his word, to help free other hearts. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.